In this video, we're going to talk about orders of approximation in chemistry. And this is a concept that can be applied to um, many different areas of chemistry. But in photochemistry, it's particularly important because we're profoundly interested in the quantum mechanical nature of molecules. And that's complicated. Solving the Schrodinger equation for anything bigger than the smallest of molecules, for example, is going to be impossible. And so we have to make approximations into, in order to get an idea of the quantum structure of a molecule. But those approximations, under certain circumstances, do break down. So we can talk about a very fuzzy picture, the zero-order approximation. The advantage of that is that we can quickly generate that using only our, only our minds. Just by thinking through, for example, a Lewis structure on a page, we can generate the zero-order approximation. We can then make corrections. The first-order approximation, and this may help explain some phenomena or structural aspects that the zero-order approximation cannot explain. Then we can refine those further with the second-order approximation, third-order, fourth-order, fifth-order, etc., uh, until we get whatever level of accuracy and precision we really need. And for our purposes, we really won't think beyond the first order of approximation because that gets us um, enough of a qualitative understanding of how photochemistry works that it'll satisfy our purposes. So to understand this a little more deeply, I wanted to use an analogy from the world of video games. So there's a, a Mario Party game on the Nintendo Switch, and, and one of the mini games in that game uh, is what you see right here. And the, the simple idea is to connect these images on the bottom, these character images on the bottom, to the images above. And you can see they start out very blurry and they get progressively sharper. And we can think about the, the level of blurriness as an analogy to the order of approximation with the most blurry image being the zero order approximation. So for example, if I'm looking at this image right here in the bottom right, just from this picture and my knowledge of the Mario universe, I'm fairly confident that this is Princess Peach, right? Pink dress, yellow hair. Based on my prior understanding of the Mario universe, I can draw that conclusion. But if I want more specific information about what Princess Peach is doing in this picture, I need to go to the next order. I need to add the next order term, we might say, and increase the resolution. So now let's actually watch the minigame proceed and, and see what happens as the resolution increases. So you can see here, now we've, we've moved to a, a profoundly higher resolution with more pixels, right, in the image. And now we can draw additional conclusions. So for example, I'm seeing a blue dot near the center of the image. Maybe that allows me to draw the conclusion to first order, okay, that she's wearing a blue brooch right at the center of her dress. And, and again, that's consistent with my prior knowledge of the Mario universe, right? That that's typical for Princess Peach's outfit, right? So say we wanted even more detailed information. Well, we need to go to even higher resolution and add on, say, a second order term or relax our approximations even further. And when I do that and get to the highest resolution image possible, now we can draw more conclusions. We can say, for example, that her mouth is open. We couldn't even see her mouth in the first order and zero order uh, images. and uh, But in the second order image, we can now draw this conclusion. So the idea of orders of approximation in photochemistry is particularly important. We're going to spend a lot of time living on the zero order level, but it's important to keep in mind that this level is based on approximations and we can remove the restrictions associated with those approximations to obtain a more accurate or precise picture of what's going on with a molecule, an excited state, for example, in a photochemical situation. And I'm just going to introduce some of our foundational approximations at this stage, and we will get into the details of what each of these means a little bit later on in the course. I just kind of want to put them in your brain. So, you know, typical in a, in a photochemical reaction or, or in a wide variety of contexts in chemistry, right, is you're looking at a Lewis structure. The Lewis structure itself is an approximation of the true quantum mechanical situation. Where the electrons are located and how they behave is typically approximated using the orbital approximation. Electrons occupying orbitals in and of itself is, is an approximation. The separability of the wave function, we'll explore what this means a little bit later, but the, the idea that we can decouple the motion of the electron from its spin and the vibrations of the molecule as, as manifested in the nuclear movements 
from the electronic energy. That separability of the wave function is itself an approximation. An instance of that is the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, which I'll just state at this stage, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the course. This pertains to electron and nuclear movement, and the idea that we can separate the two, because nuclei are much heavier than electrons. Again, wave function separability plays into that. And then, as we said, the, the very Lewis structural model, the idea that electrons live, you know, between atoms in bonds or localized to single atoms is an approximation in and of itself. For organic chemistry, it's very often a very good approximation, especially if you think in terms of sigma systems versus pi systems. What's going on inside the plane of the molecule can be very well understood using the Lewis structural model, and we can layer on models of pi delocalization onto that sigma picture to gain a, a very robust, complete picture of what's going on with molecular electrons. It's still an approximation, though, and if we want to know, for example, detailed quantitative information about the, the experimental energy levels in an organic molecule, we often need to move beyond these localized electronic pictures. Now, how do we go from zero order to first order in a chemical context? Well, we do this by applying first order corrections, or we might say mathematically adding in a first order term, quote unquote. And, and generally, this means turning on some kind of interaction that was disallowed or forbidden or ignored at zero order. And I'll give you a few examples here. And again, we will get into the details later on in the course. But spin orbit coupling, the idea that the orbital motion of an electron is related to its spin, and the two can interact. Vibronic coupling, molecular vibrations can interact with electronic energies and, and orbital occupations, orbital motion. And in general, allowing apparently distinct electronic quantum states to interact, this goes back to the Lewis structural picture of molecules and what we'll call the natural bond orbital picture of electrons in a quantum mechanical sense in, in molecules. It's a localized bonding picture to a large extent, and, and we need to bend the rules on that to some extent because, of course, in, in general, electrons are delocalized. And that amounts often to turning on interactions between what look like distinct quantum states in the localized picture. More on that later in the course. 